once again, welcome to Axminster Tools Head Office here in Devon. Uh, my name's Craig Steele. We've got Ben behind the, uh, the camera here. And today I thought I'd bring you um, a little jig that you can make uh, for your bandsaw, uh, a circle cutting jig. Very simply, we're gonna use a couple screws, a piece of 18 mil MDF, and a piece of nine mil or three eighths of an inch ply. Um, so let me show you what the end result will be. So Ben, come on in close here and let's um, just make sure that we've got a good shot. All right. So this is what we're gonna be looking at. It's just a very simple slide through jig. I'll do the cut and then I'll, I'll take it off and show you the underside. So if we can get a bit of extraction, please, Ben. The machine arm. Slide on through to a stop. A little bit of pressure in the centre. Now rolling. Coming back around the way we started. Hello. Turn off. And there we go. A simple cut out circle. Now who wants circles to cut out? Well there's a whole host of different jobs uh, in the workshop but you may need circles. Um, certainly wood turners, um, big you know turn in your bowl blanks. I think the more round the the bowl blank um, is put on the machine the better particularly if you've got small lathes you don't know, big unregular size shape causing that little lathe to vibrate. So cutting a nice regular circles, you might make kids toys where you've got trucks and tractors you're making out of wood and you need to cut wheels. You might make clocks. You might want round stuff like this, but don't have a lathe. But you can get perfectly round with, you know, there will be a little join line there where I started and finished the cut, but I can barely, in fact, I can't see it. Um, well, we're gonna go through a little step-by-step -step on, on making this today. So, it's a very simple thing. Look. Can you see that, mate? Yeah, we got it. Come around. So, a piece of 19 mil to match your 19 mil mitre fence slot. We can't have this too thick in this area because generally these, the depth of a mitre fence slot is only kind of 10 or 11 mil. So we're working with some some nine mil ply. So one of the first jobs I'm going to do is cut this strip. Cut another strip because this is the stop. This is what brings you back to that positive stop against the table. Right, ready, stop. And once you hit that stop, you find your line then where you've just simply drilled whatever screw holes that you want. I've got some imperial ones here, so uh, one at two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, seven inch, eight inch. You can do whatever increments that you want, obviously. A three inch distance from the blade to this this hole here is going to give you a six inch diameter piece and what I'm using here is just a little wood screw little 20 mil wood screw because I'm 18 mil MDF and I've got a 20 mil screw and I can just drop this in wherever it suits countersunk just slightly so the screw heads don't rub on the table and what that gives me I don't know whether you can get in that close is just that little compass point All right. mm -hmm. so we're going to go through the the step by step of making one of these and you can make this specific to your size of machine okay Ben so if we can go uh, just pan back round and we'll go to the workbench for a second okay That's the piece we don't need right now. Wash drill out of the way. So we've got a piece of 18 mil MDF. Um, I've cut this kind of square, and, and I normally do this about the same size as my bandsaw table. It's not that crucial, it's not that important. If it's a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, more rectangular than square, it really doesn't matter. You see this one is is rectangular 
Well, there is two sets of holes on this one because I use it on two different machines. That's why you'll see this entry hole, uh, this entry line is, is slightly different. So this is for one of our trade machines and this is for this, this Kraft 260B bandsaw. So if you've got two machines, you can make one jig, one jig to, to do work on, on both bandsaws if you have them like, like we do. So, what we need to do, these two bits are pretty much all we need, along with a couple of screws and just a little splash of glue. I think the first thing I'm going to do is take my 9mm ply and I'm going to take this down to a little under 19mm wide. So I'm going to set the fence on the bandsaw to do that. So Ben, if we could just come over to the bandsaw. Here we are, okay. Mm -hmm. right, just let me lift these, these guides up out of the way, just for a second. I'll drop them down in the right spot in a minute or two. And what I'm going to set is the distance between the blade and the fence, which is a little under 19 mil. Now, I'm pretty confident with the scale set up on my bandsaw, but if you're not, you know, there's nothing wrong with just getting a rule in there just to double check. And of course, if you cut slightly wider, you can always cut again or, or, or skim it down or just block plane it, sand it if it's a little bit. It doesn't matter what I found, it doesn't matter if there's a slight movement in here. So although we've got a 19 mil slot, I'm happy to go a little under 19 mil because that slop, the slack in the mitre fence, which normally you, you wouldn't really want too much, it doesn't really matter. Certainly doesn't affect this jig. So I'm just going to drop the guides down as low as I can. Now the guides, they are going to come into contact with the fence. Now normally guides on a bandsaw, you drop them down to about 20 mil above the workpiece, just to cover as much blade as you can and get as much control in the guides as you can in this area. But this one, because the fence is in the way, not possible right now. So I think what we're going to do is just simply rip down our ply to that 18 mil. So if you could do the extraction for me again, Ben, please. Okay. So My hand's a good distance away, I'm not worried about it, I don't feel I need a push stick. If I get closer in, then maybe. Yeah, I've got to finish the car, slow down, so I don't pop through and slip. Alright, so around the back, that's one. Alright, so I'm just going to check that. So that, I think, is just a little bit too tight. It won't quite. Actually, that's a damn perfect fit. But I want just a bit of movement in this, so it is just a smidgen too tight. All right, look at that. All right, so I'm just gonna move this fence over. Just, I mean, I could skim that. I could skim it with a little rock plane, but I've got plenty of, um, plenty of fly. Just how it shows how precise this, um, this fence setup up with then. Okay. All right, so we go through again. That's going to slide through that perfectly. It's not going to sit above the level of the table. All right. So it's not going to get caught. It's not going to wobble about. That's just right. Now really I need two of those. So we're just going to cut another one quickly. It's all regular. Lovely. Turn it off. Yeah, extraction off then. That would be lovely. Thank you my friend. And what we'll do, if we can come back over to the bench now. Yeah. Alright. Mm -hmm. So the first bit, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to take these corners off. I'll cut and ply on the underside of the cut. You'll get a little bit of splintering out. It's a quarter inch wide, six TPI blade that I've got on there. I'm probably just going to lose all of these corners. Just nice and smooth. While I'm on it, I'll probably do all these corners as well. And jigs that I make, I don't like any sharp corners, just in case they get some corner-to-corner -corner clash 
with um, corners on the machine or corners on my fence slots. Alright, do both sides because I haven't decided which way up I'm going to use it, you know? Uh, there we go. That's removed any little sharp edges, any little burrs that are on there. Now, as I said, this material is pretty square. We didn't really measure it, did we? So, 450, 440, just over. So, I'm going to go that way. I'm going to go slightly wider to give me a bit more support with our circle that's cutting here. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to screw in a stop. Remember the stop that came to the, the front edge of the donk? Comes to the comes to the table on your bandsaw, this stop. Now that's this piece. This is the first bit that I'm gonna put in place here now. Alright. So I'm gonna cut this off to length very quickly first. So we don't need it beyond there. So just a little nip off with the bandsaw. Come on over me as I see this. Just pan around. Just a little. Okay. Leave the offcut there for a moment. We don't want to go fishing for the offcut with the machine running. Okay. Machine stopped and in we go. Let's get rid of that. So we've got a piece now that we can fix to that. Now that's going to act as our as our stop. Right, so I'm just going to drill a series of holes. Don't want to be too precise about this. There we go. Got four holes, equidistant. I will countersink them as well. Why not? Not that this particular one really matters. Um, hey, the countersinks I like using. These ones, the multi-flute ones. You know, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, six different cutters there. And they give a really good finish on almost all materials, particularly ply that's known to splinter a bit. So I just want to drop that just so the screws just drop in. Find the hole, there we go. Next one. Yeah. Right. Can drop on there. Uh -huh. Make sure I've got the right length screws, Craig. Yes, we have. Right. Uh, it's going to be just a simple screw job. There's another one. I'm just going to align this. Now what I've done, I've made sure that this has been cut square. It's going to help me out a little bit. I'm going to line up the edge of this strip, the stop strip, to the front of the board there. All right. Move to one side, a little splash of, little splash of glue, not too much. All right. You can see it's just a delicate little bead. Okay. Spread them about a little bit. Perfect. I don't know about you guys, but when I glue up, I've always got a, a wet rag ready. It's part of the gluing up process, just to wipe off any excess glue that you overspills. It's always nice to put on a good lot of glue and you do get overspill. And given that I'm making this particular project quite quickly, I'm not gonna give it time for the glue to dry. to wipe pull the glue off so it doesn't get sticky on my bandsaw table. Mm. I'm even putting these in by hand, look. Yeah. I know. You thought I was going to use the cordless drill, didn't you? Normally, yeah. Okay. One more at the end. And what that gives us then is our stopper. After that, we'll have a little wipe off, make sure there's no glue in spat out. A little, tiny little bit at this end. Some wet rag ready. Saves, if you wipe this off now, saves a lot more work later, I find. 
trying to chisel off, scrape off glue. Okay, so step number one, you stop her. Okay, now just pan over to the, the bandsaw a second, Ben, if you will. Mm -hmm. Take the fence off, we don't need that anymore. So that gives us our stop. But what we need to do is position the other strip, whichever one that it was, that was that one that was too tight, wasn't it? That was the one that was perfect. We've got to get this in the right position. What I tend to do, I don't have the jig in the middle. Uh, sorry, the blade in the middle of the jig. I have it slightly offset. Because you think when you're turning, when you're cutting the circle, you're cutting from this side and you've got the material sat here. It could be slightly bigger material. So you've got, if you're just offset a little bit, you've got this supporting your material. Because you can do this on quite chunky stuff. You know? I mean, I've done, what's the biggest? I've done about a 20 inch circle on this. You know, it's only marking up to 10 inch here. Screw comes through and rotate against. The jig was slightly wider, slightly longer. So I think the position of this in relation to this, now, I normally mark up about a, th about a third. So that's a 450. So a third of that will say is, is 150. All right, and I'm going to fix this to the underside of this at that 150 point, making sure that it's square to my stopper. Back to the bench then, Ben, please. Make sure we're coming off the right side. We flip the jig over now. Here we are. So I'm measuring off at 150. And like I said, this, this varies, this 150 measurement varies in relation to the size of your bandsaw, really, and the size of the jig you're making. Um, but I tend to do it about a third from the one side. So this strip has to be fixed in this point now. Got to be cut off to length. I don't think we need to go full length, I don't often, but um, so we'll do, I kind of chop it off at about that point. It's fine, it's going to pick up the mitre fence slot. I do need to just sand over all this as well. I'll do that after I've taken one more cut off. So I'm just going to very quickly use my mitre fence to cut off square. There we go, turn them off, leave the off cut, it doesn't matter. Don't need it, don't want to, no need to go fishing for it. Now we've got all this, these little bits of fluff we need to just take off. Right, make sure it's all smooth and round. So I've had jigs like this that I've used for, I don't know, four or five years without having to do anything more to them, without having to repair them, without having to you know, these bits don't wear, um, you know, ply is quite durable, quite hard. You could really go to town on this if you want and make um, make this out of hardwood. So it's a, maybe a little bit more durable, who knows. But that is going to be a mark. Another 150 mark down the bottom. I'll do that on there. So, now it's a case of fixing that in position. It's got to be square to our stop, stop rail. Bring in the square there. Right, offer it over. No good the eyes on it. Reasonable. Right. And I will put just a little fine line either side, just in case when I'm drilling out or screwing it, I um, I go off a little bit. Alright. So just pop that little. And again, just three will do, I think. In fact, we'll get some more. Ben, you wouldn't just um, nip and get me a couple more of those out of the box. So, slightly shorter, will do, but no longer. There we are. Okay. And we'll definitely countersink these. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Move ahead. Oh, that should be right. Alright, make sure that's still in position in relation to my little pencil lines. 
I'm just going to drop that, kind of that sunk, kind of sink that in nicely. Okay. A little bit more on that one. Because this has got to slide through, we don't want any screws protruding. So we end up with um, the screws, the underside of the screw catching Oh, bit of glue, bit of glue. If we have got the bigger screws, mate, that would be yeah. useful. Yeah. Um, A little bead down the middle, not too much. If not, don't worry, I'll make it work. No, no, they're all get me. Um, a magnetic bit holder and a posi one, and please should have got the boxes of screws out ready, guys. Really, never mind. Okay, nice one in. So you can see what we've got there. Let's have a little clean up of that glue. Yeah. We're missing a screw, but we'll bob that in in a minute. This is gonna run in our mic defense slot. This is gonna be a little stopper. Yeah. So what we'll do now is, is we'll come back over to the bandsaw. We'll drop that screw in in a minute. That's not gonna, not gonna hurt what we're trying to do here. So let's come back over to the bandsaw then. Right, now we've got this jig, hasn't got a slot in it yet, but we'll slide through now. All right. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna create our little stop, uh, our little slot, and then from that slot we can work in our screw holes, okay? So a bit of extraction. Here we go. Come to a stop, and I'll turn it off. Okay, yeah, turn the extraction off. You'll find some more screws just in the other room there. Colwyn's been um, doing some work in his turning room. Yeah. Um, no, leave it that, that's fine, I'll take care of that from there. Yeah, if you can, um, yeah, just so the, the 20 mil 3 or 3.5s. So, what we've got that comes now to that positive stop. We've got our bandsaw cut line, but off this line now, we need to just get another line coming off. So what I'll do, I'll just use the square, right just off that line, to give me a line to work on. Okay. You can see there now, we've got our bandsaw slot line, We've got our line which we're going to put our screw holes in. We've got our stopper. Can you see that? We've got our stopper. And we've got our 19mm slot that runs in our mic defense. Okay. So, yep, yeah, that'll do, mate. Great. So, if we can come back over to the bench. Mm -hmm. Ben's just had a quick dash to the other workshop and grab the screws. Colwyn pinched him. I'm going to blame Colwyn. <laughs> Right, so just to recap, there you go. Bandsaw slot, come to a positive stop. We've squared off that line. Now we need to just make some, some incremental marks. Now this is up to you, whether you're an imperial man or a metric man, whatever you want to do. We're going to go metric on this. All right, so let's do them every 20 mil. 
so or they're 20 mil soon you're not going to get a 40 mil disc so 50 mil 100 mil and so that'll be 50 100 and then 150 all right you could do these whatever increments suit and you can add in if you've got a uh, an 80 mil holder cut well you can bob one in at 40. All right. so what we're going to do now we're just going to drill some holes in this position we're going to drill it from the top and then countersink it from the underside all right um probably gonna mark just the same from from this side and we'll take it to the pillar, pillar drill so it's nice if these are nice and parallel so let's just mark that from the other side. Square off to my cut mark. And what do we say? We're at 50, 100, 150. So. All right, so just drill some holes in there and then we'll count the thing come in as well. And we've got to go all the way through with this. So Ben, if we can get a come over to the pillar drill. Mm -hmm. I'll just drop in the drill bit I want to use. And just carefully, it's quite a fine drill, it's only a little two and a half mil drill bit I'm using here. All right, okay. Lovely. I'm gonna go all the way through this. The whole table needs to be lifted up. A simple job. Got to wind. Incidentally, if you've got a pillar drill at home, that wobbles perfectly normal. The idea behind that is, when you've got these collars in place, that this top collar isn't pushed down hard on this this bar, so you can swing it out of the way to do bigger stuff. It's not kind of a little bit wobbly, a little bit loose. Not very good. It's just the way they are. All right. So, as I said, we've got to come all the way through. So let's see if that does that. Not quite. There we go. That'll go all the way through the central hole in the table there. Mm -hmm. So, lock that off. Yeah, come around whichever side looks better, mate. Okay. Now, the limitations of small pillar drills. It's kind of a deliberate mistake, believe it or not. We're not going to reach it, are we? Maybe that's something you consider when you buy a pillar drill. This serves 99.9% jobs we do in here. We've got a much bigger one across the way. So this particular pillar drill has its limitations. We've just not got the, the throat here to reach the holes that I need to. So I'm afraid it's back over to the bench. Okay. All right. So it's just one of those little things that you just need to consider. Maybe when you're buying a pillar drill, have you got the throat you need to, to get into some of the the longer reach into the middle of a board if, if you do that sort of work. The radial drill's quite good. And it looks like an like an alien. It's got an elongated head and the actual top head slides backwards and forwards so you can get a good reach into middle boards like this. Right, on this one, I'm gonna make sure I don't drill into my bench. And it's just a little hole through. One, two, three. That's all I need for the moment. Okay. I'll just count to sink those. Now, it's important that the heads of the screws on this are sat beneath the level of this. So, where are those screws, mate? The other ones? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's got to come right through the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the long, slightly longer ones. <laughs> so I'm going to just drop that, drop that, drop that. And that ensures the head of the screw is sat underneath there. And I'm just going to drop this remaining screw in here. So on 18mm material, I want to be using 20mm screws. Really? What do we got? Yeah, we've got the ones. Right. 
We're back to the oh, there's one. We only need one. Yeah. We only need one. We have one rogue. Okay, great. Now this will come through now. Just gonna make sure the heads. And what we're looking is that the screw comes through the surface of your jig, just like that. And that's your compass point. That's your center point there, look. That's just enough. That's only coming through a couple of millimeters. You can see from the back there, I'm not screwed it in too firm, too hard. But that gives me just enough, all right? And that can be easily changed. I tend to use a hand screwdriver on this. I don't want to bring the power tool to it and risk kind of chewing up the holes. So the kind of delicate touch. Let's put it on the, the bigger one, which is the furthest away from, from that. Screw that in place. And if you feel that the screw isn't coming through quite enough, you can just drop it, push, uh, put the, the countersink holes in just a little bit deeper. All right, so that's come through just the right amount. All right. So then that is your circle cutting jig. It's as simple as that. And the good thing is you can make it to suit your machine. Very simple thing with a little stop, my defense slot, whatever hole spacing that you want to, circle, to suit the circle size that you've got to cut. I think one thing is important is you use a quarter inch blade, which cuts curves really well. It's the one that we've got on our machine here. So if we wanted to cut another circle in there, let's just make a, find a center and a square, it's just Join in the corners. There we go. A little bradle. Now that just helps me find that screw. It's very difficult to see now your mark. So, but with a little little bradle mark, that in, sits in nicely now and spins against the blade. So let's come back over to the bandsaw and give it a test. Hopefully it works. Once we found the screws we wanted, we're all right. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, no, no. <laughs> right, here we go. So give us some extraction, mate, if that's yeah. all right. Okay. Uh, Okay. I think what it was is the piece of material we had, as you can see, was we had about a 150. Alright, so it's a kind of 300 mil disc. It's only a 250 mil piece of material, but not a problem. This is easily adjusted. center point. What I like to do also is just to help me find the mitre slot is when you're in just put a couple of markers there so you can line that up. Right. There we are. Let's see if we can find that center hole once again. It's the most difficult part normally. Okay we'll go again. If we're 100 mil from the blade, 100 mil from this slot, what we've got there is a 200 mil disc. So that's it on skinny material, little thin ply, easy to cut stuff. Let's try it on something a little bit more chunky. We've got a little bit of inch and a half poplar, tulip wood there. Let's just check the size, what size we are. We're not quite going to get. 
Let's, let's just do that anyway. So just joining up the corners to give me a center. Okay, we're not quite gonna get a full round. But you're definitely gonna get the idea that you know you've got the capacity to do chunky stuff as well. So again, we'll just find that, that brattle hole. So, same thing. Up to the stop. And we go. little circle cutting jig for you one that you can make to suit your machine even if your machine doesn't have this quite common mitre fence slot at 19 mil three quarters of an inch you can cut your material to suit your slot very simple board as you know we've just showed you we have a stop plate or a stop bar a little piece that runs in the mitre fence slot slide on through this will take you to your stop, square off from that, and whatever hole spacing that you want to, to create and cut the circles that you want. Okay, then you can mark them up from the top so you know the dimensions. Simple screw through, and it's important just to get that screw just poking through. If you get too much screw coming through, your material starts to pick up on the screw thread. That's okay. What you can do is just file down the tip so it's not a screw thread anymore. It's just like a, almost like a nail point. Well, there we have it. One circle cut and jig to suit one craft bandsaw. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions, please post them. I think Colwyn's got a couple of questions that um, I'm going to be answering for him. So if you've popped Colwyn a question or two, they might come my way, but that's fine. Um, please tune in for Colwyn's video tomorrow at 4, and I will see you next Wednesday at 4. I've been Craig, he's been Ben, in the Skill Centre at Axminster. Thanks very much. See you later. <laughs>